Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I'm showing you Keyshot rendering realistically, really rapidly. <laughs> So this is the rendering that we're going to do today and this is the photo that it's based on. First off, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and it's got some amazing photography classes that are going to really help with setting up the camera in Keyshot today. I can get you two free months if you sign up using the link down below and the best thing is you can cancel at any time. I use Skillshare so much to learn loads of different types of skills that I can use across disciplines. So I would really recommend using these Skillshare classes, even if it's not the particular skill that you want to be learning like photography, you can always use it in rendering later on. Thanks Skillshare. So you can see I've got this crazy setup laid out with loads of different lights everywhere, things in the foreground to act as things in the reflections. And you can see I've got the lamp uh, in there as well. That's the way that I've set up this um, rendering and I've got a box to enclose it all to act as walls as well. So we'll jump in now and everything is the same material. And this is where you can start to see the Skillshare influence that I've used because instead of the standard 35 millimeter camera, I've changed it to be 80 millimeters and you can see the difference there between the fisheye 35 and the nice natural 80 millimeter lens that I've used for the main camera. So I changed all the materials to be unlinked so that I could start adding different materials in. And throughout this tutorial, you'll see me jump between the basic lighting and the interior lighting because that's gonna help your computer render things uh, or not need to render things as you're working. So with the basic mode on, I realized I didn't have any lights actually turned on. So now I'm gonna go through and change the lights that I've got set up to have an actual light value. And I'm gonna use this area light diffuse and I'm gonna change the meter mode to be a lux type because that's the most natural type of light you can have in Keyshot. It takes in consideration not only the brightness but also the size of the light. So instead of just using lumens, which is the normal um, value, I would always recommend changing it to lux. Another tip is to model everything in one-to-one -one scale because Keyshot is gonna measure where light bounces in one-to-one -one as well. And you can't scale down that light bounce ray equation. So you should render everything at one-to-one -one scale to make sure it's as realistic as possible. So now I'm gonna go through and start changing the materials. And you can see that I'm using the material graph and I've downloaded a lot of these textures from Polygon and there are some great tutorials online on how to use Polygon textures. So I recommend checking those out. But right now I am basically mapping the concrete for the way that I want it. And I'm gonna use a cylindrical map because it's mainly a cylindrical product. And I can use the mapping tool to rotate it and find a section that I like the look of so that it's natural for the scale it's at. A lot of renders are let down by the scale of the materials, whether it's too big or too small. You really need to make sure the materials are at one-to-one -one scale as well as the actual model itself. So the thing about materials is that nothing is perfect. And when you're rendering something like this, you need to make sure that it's not perfect either, which sounds counterintuitive. But whenever you're making concrete like this, there are so many surface imperfections that without them, it's going to look like a flat material and it's gonna look like a JPEG posted on a cylinder. So adding these extra nodes into the material graph will give a 3D sense to the material, even though it's still just the same geometry as before. Keyshot will read it with bumps and different spaces for highlights and shadows and roughness and reflections. And you can go into quite a lot of detail. Again, there are so many tutorials online, but this tutorial is just to show you a quick overview. The main thing I want you to take away from this is to make your materials complex so that they look more realistic and not just a JPEG pasted on the material. The flip side to that is, of course, you're adding so many more layers into this material graph and that's gonna make the render times increase. So you need to find a balance between having good render times and having realistic renders because you can increase your rendering times so much that it's just not practical anymore. So when I've come to do the glass now, I'm using a noise fractal 
texture as a bump map. And this is my most favorite thing to do to really give a sense of realism to any material is add a fractal bump map. Essentially, when you photograph objects and when you render objects, uh, they're very different things. So with photographs, you want to try and get rid of all the surface imperfections and make it look as perfect as possible. Whereas with a render, everything starts off perfect and you need to try and add some realism back in by adding some surface imperfections. This noise fractal bump map means that you can add in manufacturing defects like the wave of the glass that will make the render look more realistic in the future. The next thing I'm doing is adding in a gradient map this is going to allow the plastic material that I've added as a label to be visible or invisible because the glass actually has a gradient in the source image that we're trying to copy. So I'm just making sure that I can map that to be as close to the source image as possible. And I'm going to be using this as an opacity map on the label itself so that everything else in the glass is clear, whereas the top bit just gets a little bit darker where it's visible. And you can see that I've swapped them over now to make them the right way around. And that's how you get the gradient on any material like that as well. I also use that technique in the glasses tutorial that I used for the tortoise shell that I posted last week. Uh, it's just the exact same technique to turn them into sunglasses. So I'm turning the light into an actual light source now and I've added in a warm glow using the Kelvin meter at the side. That's gonna give it a natural bulb color and then I can go through and adapt any of the geometry that I happen to have moved slightly by accident. <laughs> so the lamp actually is looking pretty much finished by this point. Now I move on to the actual scene itself and I've got these floorboards modeled separately and again, trying to add imperfections by rotating the floorboards a little bit so they're not even. When you can see the final render, you can see that actually some of the floorboards have twisted and I just modeled that in to add some surface imperfections as well. I've also been adding in some polygon textures again and making sure that they're mapped correctly with a correct scale. And you can hit C on the keyboard to show just the type of material that you've got selected in the material graph. And then when you hit C again, everything will come and combine together uh, to show the whole finish as a whole. So pressing C, make sure you can uh, adjust the selection that you've got, really fine tune it. And this is again where you can see the noise fractal on the wall, because even walls in houses, uh, none of them are straight whatsoever. They have got waves in, they've got uh, paint details in, that's gonna change and just break up that surface so it's not a flat white background. It's gonna have a little bit of a gradient to it when I render it as well. So as I mentioned before, I've got lights to turn on at the side of the light and I've got things in the foreground to act as reflecting barriers against the light as well. Just to try and make it seem like there are more things added into the scene instead of just a light on its own in a studio. I wanted to make it seem like it was more in a room. So that means that it's gonna reflect its surroundings and you have to try and add in, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly chairs and tables that it's reflecting, but you just have to give the notion of reflections in the glass and then once those are all turned on and the reflections are coming up with something similar to what i need then it's all about tweaking all of those different elements to get the right look that i'm after so i'm going to speed up the video even more now just so you can see all of the tweaks that i'm making without being too boring but this is the process that i use for every single render that i do to try and add more realism
So there it is guys, that's just a few tips and tricks that I use personally to get a more realistic render in Keyshot. You can let me know down in the comments below what other features you use to get a more realistic render. And don't forget to tell me what types of videos you want in the future because I need you guys to tell me. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.